What's up? It's Brandy Lucas. Welcome back to my channel where you'll find all things beauty, entrepreneurship, and short hair. So jumping in today with another video for you guys. And in today's video, I want to chat and take on some of the frequently asked questions that I get either in my comments, on my Instagram page, in my DMs, or even here under my videos on YouTube. I want to tackle some of them and give y'all the answers that you have been asking your girl for. And make sure you stick around. Anytime I share a video on my Instagram where I am molding my hair is the relaxer question. And people often ask, how often do I personally relax my hair? Or how often should they, you, whoever, relax their hair? That is such a broad question, but I'll do my best to make it make sense. I'll go with me personally first. So I do not relax the top part of my hair very often. My hair is a bit finer. My family's heredity is that my hair is going to be a bit thinner in the crown as I age. And I can already see little glimmers of that beginning to happen. So I do not over relax my hair at the top of my hair. So when I do relax, what I do relax most often is the perimeter of my hair. That is often called a edge up or a partial relaxer. So I partially relax my hair every about two weeks. If my hair is really short and I'm wearing it almost faded down, I might relax it every week. And I do that because I'm working out. Generally, when I'm like going in and going hard with my workouts, I will have my husband just shave my sides down or if I'm just not trying to deal with it. Let me not try to make it like it's all about working out. If I am really not trying to deal with my size a lot, I'll wear it shaved down. And when it's at that length, I'm more likely to relax it because the hair is getting constantly cut off. It's not like I'm uh, fearing over processing it or it being damaged because I'm just getting it cut off. And I'm doing that for the purpose of the ease of me being able to just quickly lay it down and it look neat and not all tight and rolled up. With the top of my hair, I generally wait about between six and eight weeks. When I get to that six week, that six to the eighth week, it gets real out here. Like it gets quite fuzzy, it gets thick, it gets hard to manage and hard to tame. Um, but that is about the scale that I go by. Now, when I talk about my clients, majority of my clients who are every week or every other week clients are on a regimen where every other week they get their partial on the sides and back, depending on the individual hair texture, lifestyle, um, heredity, all of these factors, medication. I take everything that I need to into consideration. And that is how I space out how often I give them a full relaxer or a relaxer on the top of their head. So that is not a one size fits all type of question. When people ask me that, I either give them a suggestion based on what I do for my hair, my personal needs and lifestyle, or what I do for the majority of my clients. But chemical services are a individual thing you need to take too many things into consideration for it to just be like yeah you should relax your hair every week or every four weeks it should not be approached like that and often in salons we see a lot of damage we see a lot of thinning we see a lot of over processed hair because people have not understood the importance of making sure that your regimen for your relaxers needs to be determined by your particular hair's need and that needs to be done by a professional stylist. Frequently asked question is what are the best products for short hair? And that's another very general question. I think that I have to frame it through what in my opinion are the best um, 
products for short hair and I have a video where I'm sharing all of my favorite products that I use on my hair personally. So I use them at home and I use them in my salon. We basically use one product line at my salon and that is for the barbers as well as my clientele and for natural hair stylists, natural hair clients as well. This is a great product line that kind of encompasses a little bit of everybody. I will link the video where I dive deeper into all of the products that I suggest for short hair somewhere up here. I'll link it. I'll link it. So make sure you click on there so that you can see. But some staple products for short hair are an amazingly moisturizing shampoo and conditioner is very important. Often we are using whatever we can find or whatever the the uh, drugstore verbiage tells us is like um, argan oil or you know whatever the buzzword in hair is you really need to use if at all possible a salon level product if you are a person who is visiting the salon you should be getting products from your stylist from the salon if you are going somewhere where they are not retailing shame on you whoever your stylist is but if they are not retailing, then ask your stylist for a suggestion of at-home products that you should be using in between. A good moisturizing shampoo and conditioner. Uh, for short hair, you're going to need the right combs. You're going to need a molding comb. Um, I also highly suggest a comb-out comb if you guys are interested in just the, not products, but the tools that I think are instrumental in short hair, then drop down in the comments below and tell me that you guys would like to see that. And I'll make a video just about the tools because I don't have one of those. I do have a video about the products. So if you want to know more about combs and uh, styling tools, then let me know and I will make that. Uh, a good molding comb is what had me go on that tangent. You need a excellent foam. Foam is very, very important. The only time you wouldn't use a foam is if your hair texture is rather coarse and you may need a gel. But even with a gel, a water-based gel, you still could implement um, a percentage of foam and gel together to get a really nice mold. But a molding foam is like by far, if I say that any product is most important, I would say a foam. Um, a foam, you need wrap strips because you want to make sure that you're properly setting your hair. I'll also link the video to how to mold your short hair somewhere up here. So you can click on that if you're not familiar on how to mold your hair or you just want to reinforce how to do that. Uh, I really highly suggest that if you're rocking your short hair style that you have a dryer at home. So whether you get the hooded dryer or they have the dryers that you can attach to your blow dryer, check the comments, uh, the description. I'll try to find a link to that for you guys also, but it is super simple. It travels with you. If you have a handheld hair dryer that has a round spout that the air comes out of you just put this thing over the um, spout of the dryer and it blows the dryer up you put it over your head and it molds it dries your hair and sets your mold as if you had the regular dryer um, you know salon dryer or hooded dryer so those are key and then your products uh, your post mold products i would say a moisturizing cream or oil and if you're going in and adding heat to your hair, then you want to have something that is a barrier for the heat. So some type of heat protectant. I personally use a curling wax and I will share it with you somewhere here because I don't think that that's in the product video. But I think that you guys will get a great uh, idea of some of the products that I personally use in my salon and on my hair by checking out that video. So People always also ask, can I rock short hair without a relaxer? And again, that is one of those questions that is very conditional on the individual. Uh, in general sense, yes, there are some people who rock short hair with no relaxer at all. 
Uh, some of those people have very fine or not coarse hair textures. Some people do have coarse hair textures and they opt to do the parture relaxer on the sides and back and not on the top. And then there are some people who are completely natural and they constantly get their hair silk pressed. So yes, you can rock short hair without having a relaxer, but there are so many conditions. It's not for everybody. If you are a person who is prone to sweating in your hair, if you're like really active, if your hair reverts quickly, I personally would not suggest that you opt for that option because it's almost like a waste of your time and your money. As soon as you get your hair straight, if you have a, a hot moment, it's going to be a done deal because the moisture will draw your hair back up. So yeah, it can be done, but it's not something that I suggest for many people. And in order for you to understand it, if that would be a good option for you, your lifestyle and your hair, then you need to consult a professional. And that ain't something you can like DM people a picture. Look at my hair. You think I could? It's just like, sis, come to the salon, book the consultation. If you don't want to book the service, you know, for whatever reason, book the consultation so that I can actually see and feel your hair, have an in-depth conversation with you about your lifestyle your diet and the things that play a part into me being confident that you would be a great candidate for that. So that's my answer on that. How do you maintain your hair while working out? Another very popular question. Um, two or three things that I say about that. Generally, if you are rocking short hair and you are working out, what I would first suggest is that you wear a relaxer. You need to have your hair relaxed for it to give you the longevity that you're looking for because we all know that if your hair is natural when you sweat your hair is going to curl or coil or kink up depending on where you are um, on the scale of that so if you are relaxed you have a better chance of being able to work out get your workout in and pull your hair back together uh easier than you would if your hair was natural and you're still trying to wear it in a short straight style it's going to require much more time much more product much more potential damage to your hair if you're not relaxed and you're trying to wear it straight another factor is your cut is key if you are working out you want to make sure that you prioritize and you know that you will need to maintain your haircut Anytime, if you've, if you've worn your hair short and you've gone through the process of it growing out, you know how weird that can get. It can look weird, it can feel weird, and it's hard to style the hair. The more you focus on keeping your precision cut precise, the easier it will be for you at home to replicate or to just pull off something that is still very polished and neat after a workout without adding heat to your hair so the cut is key and the third thing that i would say is product 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 there are some things that are inevitable like water is going to change the formation of your hair and depending on how much sweating or moisture your hair gets you may be able to tie your hair down get up and go or you may need to kind of start over and reset your hair either with a wet mode or a dry mode Whatever the situation is, it's very important that you are using salon quality products to main your, maintain to maintain your short hair as you work out. So again, your foam is going to be key. There are products that are a little bit more water resistant or humidity resistant um, that you can use. Like the wax that I use for my hair helps to repel moisture. Awesome for um, workouts. There's also a light hairdress that I use on my hair every day. Every day. It's called Thermoseal. I'll link it. I'll put the bottle here so you can see and I'll link it in the description below. Thermoseal is a thermal protector. It's like a hair grease that you can use every day and it repels moisture also from your hair. So if you're sweating but you're only sweating a little bit, you can kind of 
put this thermos seal on, tie your mesh wrap or whatever you use on your hair as you work out, and it will help to repel the moisture so that it's not all of your hair ain't sopping wet. It'll kind of try to push the moisture away from the strands, which is clutch. If you are not a heavy sweater, it can be the difference maker between you needing to start all over after workout and shampoo your hair and being able to pump a little foam in dry mode. Like, let me fix my sideburns. Let me fix this part because it's sweat a little bit around my edges and be able to get up and go the next morning or opposed to starting all over. So those are my three things. And the final question that I get often that how can I get my hair to grow back after I have experienced damage or breakage from extensions? Don't grow them back. Happens all the time. All of the time. I get new people coming for consultations or appointments and they're coming in and they have had horrible situations where they've probably been wearing wigs where they were kind of gluing the wig down and they have lost the edges. Sometimes people are lo losing the hair on the nape of their neck. I have had people come with braids, uh, damage from braids uh, on the edges or excessive shedding when the braids come out, or sew ins. And like there is no, uh, I've seen it all. One thing that I usually suggest to people when they are looking to start a new regimen is knowing the importance of committing to whatever move you're about to make. So if you're coming to me, then you're not coming because you want to continue to wear extensions. You're not going to convince me to start putting extensions in until you get to a point where you're comfortable wearing your own hair. If you're coming to Brandy Lucas at Main and Groom, then you are ready to possibly cut your hair into a style, but you want to wear your hair short. So the first thing I always suggest for people is just be ready for the change. Know that it's going to be different. Uh, know that I think that it's best for us to get your hair to a point where on your first visit or the one after the first one where we hurry up and get it done, get off any dead hair or any damaged hair, any hair that needs to go needs to go that, so that we can start to nurture and strengthen your hair toward its best health. A regimen is going to really be important. So it's going to take a commitment to the process, a commitment to not going back to extensions, and a commitment to knowing that you're going to have to invest some time. Um, you're probably not going to always love your hair because if you go from wearing extensions and then you come out of the extensions and you're wearing your own hair, the length generally is a lot different. It's not going to be as full if you're dealing with damage and breakage. So you're going to have to fall in love with your hair. Um, and that's not saying that your hair got to be looking crazy or you got to have one of them little eighth grade school picture looks. That's not what I'm saying. I'm always working with guests to make sure that we give them a look that helps them to feel fly and confident and like feeling themselves and wearing their own hair. But psychologically, when you've gone from wearing bundles and long hair or very voluminous hair and you're going to wearing your own hair, there is an adjustment that needs to be necessary. And that's something that you just got to like, OK, I'm about to do this. I'm going to do it and I'm going to stick with it. So what's important is the commitment to the regimen, the commitment to uh, just the process and not wanting to go back to extensions when you feel some type of way about it because it's only going to hinder the process. Now, there are products, um, there are tools and things that are a part of, um, you know, treatments that we put together for our guests when they have experienced hair damage. But again, it's, a, it's not a one size fits all. It depends on where the breakage is and the person's lifestyle. Are they taking any medications? What are their diets? So it's such a holistic approach to getting people back on the road to uh, healthier hair. But those three things that I just mentioned are things that I like to talk to people about in the consultation before we even enter into a partnership or a relationship where I am the stylist helping you get your hair back healthy because those are the foundational things that need to be um, established before we go any further. Now, the things that will actually help to build the hair and fortify the hair going forward will be built into that person's individual treatment. But 
you know, that depends on the person. Thank you guys so much for rocking with me here on my YouTube channel, as well as on my Instagram. If you're not already following me on Instagram, come on over. I would like to hang out with you there too. I am on Instagram at I am Brandy Lucas. Have it right there for you. I would love to hear any questions and comments that you might have about your short hair maintenance or maintaining uh, a short hair clientele. You can drop them down in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you check the description bar for resources from this video and I'll chat with you guys real, real soon.